Okay, it's your favorite segment to call what you want, Americans Abroad. And we got to start with Gio Reyna. Gets his first ever Premier League start with Nottingham Forest. Gets an assist off the corner in a 2-2 draw versus Wolves. Tanner Tessman hits a brace. We talked about it a little bit earlier in their big 2-1 Two zero win, excuse me, over Brescia. Alex and Dejas plays the full 90 for Club America in their 5-1 win over second place to Luca. Malik Tillman scores his seventh air to VC goal of the season in PSV's ass whooping of Vitessa 6-0. And Yunus Musa provides an assist in a 3-3 draw <laughs> versus So Swolo. And uh, not a good result for Milan. Now they take on Inter in the Milan Derby. If Inter win that one, they win Serie A. They win the Scudetto. So, Chuck, I'm coming to you first. Yeah. Who stood out for you in Americans Abroad this week? Well, outside of in that ass whooping, Ricardo Pepe was <laughs> was nowhere to be found. Yeah, where um, is he? Where is he? He's, still he's MIA. MIA. Uh, it's Gio Reyna getting, getting his first start. I mean, it was about damn time. And, and for him to make an impact too, I mean, it, it was, it, I was, I was pleased with what I saw from him, his work rate, his commitment to the team, trying to be creative, you know, Wolves are a, a good team. They're, they're very difficult to play against. And I thought he did really well of, of getting on the ball when he could connecting passes. He won an aerial duel. He was committed defensively because that's the only way you're staying in this team is playing on both sides of the ball. So I thought this was, a big step uh, for him uh, to move forward and, and get some more playing time. How about how, how they used him? what do you think of how they used him? And do you think he'll start next match? I do think he'll start next match because he's very good on set pay, set piece delivery. And, and that's going to be uh, a necess- a necessity for Nottingham Forest and how they used him. I I would prefer for him to be more central. Uh, he, he likes to come out wide and and I know that, it's kind of like a crutch because you feel like you maybe get some more time and some more one V one opportunities when you can drift out wide, but I would like to see him more advanced and un- under the, you know, the striker as opposed to to being out wide. What about you? Yeah, I think so. I, I think for the most part, he played smart. He played, started out a little bit safe, got himself going in the match a little bit. Um, I think he was dynamic at times, which is going to, which was important. Uh, and that's the thing that I've kind of always asked to see more out of him, right? Like we know when he gets on the ball that he's special and he can make special passes. It's just, again, now when you're playing at the highest level, the tempo, the power in the game, it, it means that you've got to really insert yourself and, and be running, be sprinting, be, be pressing, be winning duels at times, and then also be dynamic in the way that you find the ball and that the way that you connect. So in, in general, I thought it was a, a definitely a good performance, and and I I hope to see him get the start again against Everton. Do you think he will? Yeah, I think he will. Do you think, yeah. do you think he did enough? Yeah, yeah I, think I think he so. did enough. Yeah, yeah, and and again, I think, I think so. set piece delivery is going to be key, especially for Forrest to score goals against a team like Everton as as well. Uh, not in force to give everybody some context. One point out of the relegation zone with five points. Excuse me, five games left to go in the Premier League. They got Everton away. Then they're home to Man City. That probably won't go well. Then away to Sheffield. Then home to Chelsea. And then away to Burnley. So it could really come down to that Burnley game. Um, Luton at one point behind them. So Luton obviously looking and chasing points as well. All right, Jesse, who is your uh, American abroad? Who are you highlighting? Josh Sargent. Um, It wasn't the easiest game. They played at Preston North End. And Preston played almost every ball long. Every goal kick. uh, Most times when the goal goalkeeper had the ball the ball went direct and so it can be a little bit frustrating I think when you're a striker in a game like that and you feel like as soon as the ball is given away that you're already running back down the defensive side of the pitch but you know he he stayed disciplined and focused he came underneath a lot in the in the first half and they have the number 10 homes that plays a little bit as well like a second striker with him and then I thought in the second half he was further up the pitch and he got created two scoring chances. And one of the things about Josh Sargent is he's not the biggest guy, but he is strong in duels. And when he needs to get a body on a defender and control a ball and, and he bumped a defender in the box and spun and, and almost got, he got a good shot off with his right foot and almost scored a goal at that moment. But you know, this is what the championship is at times. It's it's not always about how pretty the match is. You've got to have the right kind of mentality, especially when you go on the road. You've got to be able to fight for balls. You've got to be able to keep yourself in games. And you've got to then find ways to make plays when you need to. So it wasn't the most elegant 
performance where he was really involved in the game, but I thought he helped his team a lot. And, and in the end, didn't get on the score sheet, but still they got the win and an important win that keeps him in the hunt for the playoff at the end of the year. Yeah, to give you some context for everybody uh, that may, might not be following the championship, they got a six-point lead to stay in that playoff spot. They play Bristol City this upcoming weekend. They got Swansea at home as well after that, and then away to Birmingham. Birmingham's trying to not get relegated, so that one might be a bit of a scrap. And they probably just need three points at this point to, to make sure they get into the playoff promotion race, which would be very cool to see him participate in that if they can get into the Premier League once again. Now, for me, I'm going with Tanner Tessman. I know we had him on as a guest, so this is probably going to be doubling down once again after we showered him with praise. But I just was really impressed with how he's performed, not only in this particular game, but uh, throughout this this season. I mean, he has six goals and three assists, both career highs. What's funny is that we didn't ask him this, but Busio also has exactly six goals and three assists. So curious to see which one ends up finishing a little bit better in the goals and assists department. He's played 32 times this season. Obviously, they're trusting him in a, in a meaningful way, and he's only missed one match due to yellow card suspension. Doesn't get hurt very often. Hopefully, we didn't jinx him. He's got 90 total appearances in three seasons at Venezia, and uh, he had a brace this past weekend, as we've discussed. And he had a 10 a really... out of 10 on the interview. He nailed the interview. He nailed oh, absolutely, it. He absolutely nailed crushed it. it. He nailed it. So, so uh, very okay. cool to have him on the show. And and uh, I actually picked him prior to to locking him in as a guest. But, okay, um, okay, Jimmy. You sound sure like Charlie with the word of the day. Yeah. You, you sound like Charlie this. with the word of the day, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. So anyway, shout out to Tanner Testament once again. One big midweek fixture for everybody to put on their radar. It's Roma versus AC Milan. Leg two of the Europa League quarterfinals. Uh, Milan's down 1-0 after giving up a set piece. In leg one, that game kicks off at 3 p.m. Eastern on Paramount Plus. Uh, we'll be, I'll be in studio for it. Chuck, I think we're doing it Lab together. So predictions for that. You guys have predictions? I, you know, I really like Roma right now. Um, they've just been reinvigorated at, after. at home. I know, Roma at home, but but. I, I think I think the whole group right now is is kind of now that Liverpool looks like they're getting knocked out. It's it's like almost you know I mean obviously Leverkusen's involved, um, but yeah I mean I I I think that at Rome this will be tough for Milan. Do you, do you yeah, think there's I, any I, chance Liverpool will come back and take out Atalanta? No, or no. is this over? Atalanta's been very good at home. I think almost playing at, at playing at Atalanta yeah. is not easy, and they will man mark that game. They will try to lock that game down. I think this will be tough for Liverpool. Yeah. Well, speaking of that uh, Golasso show that's happening, want to make every goal all in one place. Come hang out with us. It starts at Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Golasso Network and Paramount Plus. You're going to see me. You're going to see Chuck. You're going to see Nico Contour, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you come in and hang out with us. No for invite. That day no, no invite. Thursday. No, that's, no invite that's, for Jesse that's Marsh. That's crazy, Jesse. After, I cannot after believe we did that. All my However, word of the day well, victories. So messed up, Listen, Jesse. Jesse, so we are going to have you. We're going to have it. We're going to have a special podcast for it. So after the Europa League happens, ah, yes. Yes. Well, thank you. Right, thank you guys for that. Break. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good, thank I you. can get my belt back. There, Jesse Marsh. Just throwing you a bone.